This video is sponsored by Audible and you can get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Matthias or if you are in the US, text message Matthias to 500 500. Audible offers a huge variety of different titles as well as Audible Originals, which are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers within theater, journalism, literature and much, much more. Listening to books can certainly inspire us as creators since photography is also a kind of storytelling. A favorite of mine that speaks to me as a street photographer and journalist is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. To listen to it for free, try Audible for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Matthias or if you are in the US, text message Matthias to 500 500. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the presence of a legend. This is the infamous Pentax MX-1. If you follow me or Pentax, you might have seen my review of the Pentax Q system from last year. I enjoyed that system so much, it ended up being the longest camera review I have ever done. So then why do I care about this old camera released back in 2013? Why not just get the newer and closely priced Pentax Q S1 instead? Well, it's because I like the Q so much and that this is basically a fixed lens version of it with some added perks as well as drawbacks. Both the QS1 and MX1 have a 12 megapixel 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS sensor that delivers a nice image. Plenty of detail and great ability. The Pentax colors are lovely and organic as always. I think the QS1 has a little more information and pushability in the shadows, but on compacts like this you're never gonna be doing any day to night edits anyway. Both cameras shoot native DNGs, so any editor can handle them without issues. Just like some of the Q lenses, the MX-1 has a built-in ND filter as well as a leaf shutter, which means that you can sync the built-in flash at crazy high sync speeds. The flash is nice, but not as nice as the one on the Q. Both cameras have great controls as well as easy and intuitive menus. Pentax really doesn't get enough credit for the menus in my opinion, and that goes for the DSLRs as well. Even things like in-camera raw processing is very well thought out. In true Pentax fashion it is highly customizable. I particularly like that you can set a screensaver image to greet you when turning it on, and that you can change the operation sound to cat sound. So overall quite similar cameras, but what then actually separates them? First of all, it's the build. The original Q was an all magnesium little marvel. The Q10, Q7 and QS1 are all plastic. Super comfortable and light, but you know, plastic. This is not plastic, nor is it magnesium. This is brass. And you can feel it, 391 grams with a battery, but well worth the extra weight. I just love a good solid feeling camera. And the rubbery material is equally nice. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually real rubber. I have the silver version, which is nice, but if you can find the sought after black model, over time you would get a lovely brass patina, like on for example the Leica M8. The bigger camera also means a chunkier grip, which I like. 
A good grip with reachable buttons and wheels is just as important, if not more important, on small cameras like these. For me, these cameras are all about catching the moment when you don't have any other camera with you or time to get it out of your bag. Since buying this, it has never left my jacket pocket. A perfect example is a funeral I attended recently. Everyone took a picture or two with their phones, no one wants to drag a big DSLR with them on such an occasion, but I could easily and discreetly get images that captured the mood and moment much better than any dull smartphone image. And this brings me to the next thing separating this from the queue. The lens. Being able to change lenses on the queue is awesome, no question about that. And lenses like the number 8 wide angle zoom and the number 6 tele zoom are so spectacular. But we are talking about multiple lenses, small or not, they still need changing. This, however, is a 28 to 112 mm equivalent range, which covers you for pretty much any situation. And on top of that, it is not an f2.8, it's a 1.8 to 2.5. The Q system does not offer anything similar. There are, however, drawbacks to it. Firstly, you need to zoom with a lever instead of a mechanical turn. And secondly, the flares when shooting into the sun at some focal length are just too purple for me. The fix, of course, being black and white. That about does it, but I have saved the best for last. A feature that makes it pretty much impossible for me to say whether or not I recommend this camera over the Q system. It has a tiltable screen. Not a fixed screen like the Ricoh GR Mark III. And not an annoying fully articulated that takes like an hour to open. Just a plain old tilt. So in conclusion, if I had to choose between the Q and the MX-1, I would probably get both. Please subscribe for my upcoming videos and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye!